Hey, what's up guys? Jeremy here from RoboDK. Welcome to the second part of the tutorial covering the usage of tools in RoboDK. In the first part, we learned how to import tools from the online library and how to use the tool details panel. In this second part, we will concentrate on having multiple TCP for a same tool and on creating and saving custom tools. Let's go. I'm starting right where we left in the first part. So in our station, we have the ABB IRB120 and the welding gun. Right click on the robot and let's see the options we have that are related to the tool. First, we can hide the robot flange frame right here. We don't really need it as soon as the tool is attached to the flange. You can also do the same with the TCP frame itself. It's easier to work on your project with that visible, but it can be a good idea to hide it if you record your demo, for example. The final result will look way better, trust me. Okay, below that we have three options that are related to the tool. Add tool TCP, add tool TCP from file, and attach tool. The first option will only add the frame of the TCP. It will not be attached to a 3D model. Let's start by deleting the weld gun. We don't need it anymore, okay. And I add a TCP, a tool frame will be created. It was automatically named tool2. And if I take a look at the tool details panel, I can see that it's positioned 200 millimeters away from the robot flange along the Z axis. This is just the default position. Like any other TCP, you can adjust the position manually. Okay, now maybe you're asking yourself, what's the point of having a TCP that's not attached to a 3D model? The main answer to that question is to add a second TCP on an existing 3D model. Okay, let's add a spindle from the online library. Okay, this one, I will scale it down to 80%, okay? Now we have the spindle 3D model and it's TCP. And let's say that we need to use two drill bits. The first one here, the section outside of the spindle measure 20 millimeters. And let's say that the second one measure 50 millimeters instead. So it's 30 millimeters longer than the actual TCP we have now. What I need to do is to place the tool to TCP 30 millimeters farther along the z-axis of the spindle TCP. To do that, I will go in the tool details panel for the tool 2. I will reset the position and I will change the TCP with respect to from the robot to the spindle. Finally, I will manually enter 30 millimeters in the z text box. As you can see, I now have two different TCP attached to the spindle each one of them representing a different drill bit length. You can then switch from one tool to the other when you need to use a different drill bit. Let's delete the spindle and the other TCP. Another good example of using multiple TCP with one single 3D model can be found in the local library. If I open it, you can find a bunch of pretty useful examples. You should definitely explore them to improve your skills in RoboDK. The example I'm looking for is the example 2 pick and place Python. In this example, we have a robot equipped with multiple suction cups that need to move balls from a stand to another one. As I run the program, you can see that each suction cup has its own TCP. They are used to position the suction cups at the right position to grab and drop the balls. Let's go back to our previous example. And if I right click again on the robot, let's explore the other options we have here. Add TCP from file. That simply open your local library with a filter that only shows you the tools that are available here. I'll show you a bit later how to add custom tools to that menu. The last option we have is attach tool. At the moment, if I click on it, nothing happens. This is because I don't have any object in my station. If I open the local library and I select the same 
paintgun.stl object I use in the basic guide and I import it. Now I can right click the robot and select attach tool. I now have the option to select the paint gun object. If I do so, the paint gun will become the tool of the robot. It's exactly the same as if I drag and drop the object on the robot. Now I still need to position the TCP at the right place. The TCP is at its default position, 200 millimeters along the Z axis of the robot flange. As you know from the basic guide, you can change that manually by holding Alt and Shift and moving your TCP with your mouse. In this situation, we are placing a TCP for a paint spray. So no need to be super precise. Okay, let's do a last quick example on how you can create custom tools from a CAD file. So let's delete this tool and open SolidWorks. You can use any other CAD software as long as it can save your part as either a STEF file, an STL file, or an IGES file. I honestly never seen a 3D drawing software that was not able to do that, so you should be okay with the one you're using at the moment. Here in SolidWorks, I have another welding gun. I also have here the technical sheet of the welding gun. The first thing to do in your CAD software is to make sure that the position of the origin of your part match with the robot flange frame origin. As you can see here, the origin of my part is exactly where I expect the center of my robot flange to be. Now I can save the part as a step file. I will call it tutorial welding gun. And I will save that one on my desktop. Now I can go back in RoboDK, reduce the size of my window a bit, and look for my step file on my desktop. Here it is. I can now drag and drop it on RoboDK and it will be imported in the station. Now I need to place the TCP at the right position. To do that, we open the tool details panel like we did before, but this time, instead of placing it arbitrarily, we will use the technical documentation. In the PDF file here, we find a 2D sketch of the welding gun. It contains all the measurements needed to place the TCP. Here we have the translation along the Z axis of the flange, same for the translation along the X axis, and the rotation around Y. We only need to transfer those information from that technical document to the tool details panel. So let's do that real quick. Okay. Okay. Perfect. As you can see, the TCP is now exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay, now that we created a custom tool, we can save it. This way, we won't have to go through the import and TCP position process every single time. Right click on the tool and select save as. I'll save it as tutorial welding gun on my desktop. Now if I go on my desktop, I have two tutorial welding gun files. One is a step file, so just the 3D model, and the other one is a tool file, which contains the 3D model and the TCP position. If you want to reuse it, you can simply drag and drop it in RoboDK. I'll delete the one we already have here, and I'll drag and drop it. As you can see, the tool was added correctly. Now let's add the new tool to our local library. This way, it will be faster to retrieve it. Let's copy the file and open our file explorer and look for C, RoboDK, and library. You can paste it here. Now it's there. Now if I go back in RoboDK, I can right click the robot and select add TCP from file. Considering that my custom tool is now part of my local library, I can find it right here. You can then import it very quickly. One last thing before the end, in a future video, I will show you how you can precisely calibrate the TCP using some robot positions. To do so, you go in the main menu, utilities, and define tool frame TCP. I won't be showing you how to do that today, 
because in itself this feature will require a 10 minutes long video, but in the meantime you can read about it in our online documentation. You can find this documentation by visiting our website. At the bottom of the home page you will find the link for the documentation. It covers pretty much every feature of RoboDK. Okay, that's pretty much everything for today's video. I hope it was helpful. If you think so, please hit that thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can come back and look for the newest tutorials. Next video will cover another essential tool in robot programming. In the next video, we will talk about reference frame. Have a good day, guys.